Happy Thursday. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I, let's see, my day's been pretty good so far. I've been very grateful. We've had really nice weather here in California. Like it hasn't been too hot. It's been really perfect riding weather. Sometimes like a little overcast in the morning and then like 70, 80 degrees. So I'm really enjoying the weather. I know it's going to get a lot hotter. So I'm enjoying it right now. It's kind of weird here in California. It's kind of like the summer is later. I grew up in Colorado where it was like always super hot June and July. But here in California, the summer is like a little bit later on. So it gets like really hot, like August, September. So I know it's coming and I'm just enjoying it. A couple of announcements tonight. The first one is that I'm going to be doing a summer dressage party. So the link should be like either above or below the video, depending on what platform you're watching on. Um, it's just going to be a fun party. So we're going to have like member features. We're going to have trivia, dressage trivia. If any of you guys have any good questions for trivia, um, send them to me and prizes and we're also i'm asking all of our members like if you have any tips that have really helped you like something that a trainer has told you that has really transformed your riding email that to me and i'm going to compile all of those and share them at the summer party so we did it last summer i'm not always like i don't know i need to get better about like having fun and enjoying life but um so I'm working on it. So summer party, Sunday, July 31st at 12 noon Pacific time. Hi, Amy. And I'm looking forward to seeing all of you guys there. Okay. So tonight's quote <laughs> is frustration begins where education ends. And so I was definitely feeling that this week. Um, because like right now, usually I ride a lot with Jo Hinneman and he's in Europe. It's my dream one year to get to go to Europe for the summer and show and train. But anyways, I was left behind this year. So he's in Europe. I'm here. And sometimes with Harvey and like with my, the horses that I ride a lot on my own, when you don't have help and you don't have any eyes on the ground and you don't get video and you don't have any lessons, you get really frustrated and you get kind of um, barn blind. So this week I've had my husband help me. So he helped me with Kensington the past two days and then he helped me with Harvey today. Sometimes it's a little tricky, like I love my husband and we have really worked hard in our relationship to be able to like help one another with our horses. And it's tricky because like, for one, you can take it really personally. Like when we first started dating, sometimes he yells at his students, which doesn't go well for me. And so he was yelling at me one time and I like just broke into tears and started crying. And I was like, you can't yell at me. But anyways, the past two days, he's helped me with both of my horses and it has been incredibly helpful. I have kept my mouth shut and not cried and he hasn't yelled at me. So it's worked out perfectly. But my point being is that when you ride alone for too long, you don't really realize what's happening. And so like for some reason with both my horses, I've been like not bending them enough to the right and not making them straight enough to the right. So with Kensington, I've been putting my right leg way too far back. Like instead of because Kensington likes to put his haunches into the right. And so he's basically trained me to keep my right leg too far back to prevent him from putting his haunches in. But because I've been riding alone so much, I don't really realize that he's making me do that and that it's happening. And so it was extremely helpful to have some eyes on the ground with my husband to be able to tell me like he was like what is your right leg doing back there like put your right leg at the girth make him react to your right leg at the girth and um and yeah just like catching it like he probably had to remind me of it i don't know 15 20 times throughout the lesson so that's why it's so important to have help and it really is that quote like frustration begins when education ends and so 
whenever I start feeling like I'm getting frustrated with my horses, that's when I know that I need to um, have a lesson or take video of myself riding. Or um, the other thing I really like to do is go online and just like watch other top riders like Google you know, Charlotte Dujardin, Stefan Peters, Jessica Van Brendel, like any of those people study what their body is doing. And that can go a long way to help you as well, because it is really hard when you're riding alone. Um, also, shout out to Amy. I know Amy is um, is watching here tonight, but um, I Amy's one of my students who's part of the workshops that I do every month. And so last night we had a call on the independent seat. What's super fun um, is that students of mine are able to actually submit videos of their riding and then we can go over them together. And it's it's fun for me because sometimes what happens in dressage too is that the progress is so slow that when you are in it like day to day, it's kind of like losing weight, right? Like when you're trying to lose weight, it doesn't happen overnight and you don't like see it in the day to day. But when you look back a month, a lot has changed. And so that's kind of, I think what this student was struggling with was like in the day to day, she felt like she wasn't making that much progress. But where I hadn't seen a video of her and her horse for like, maybe three or four weeks, the progress was huge. Like the horse was way more put together, way more collected, way more engaged. And she was feeling frustrated because she had had like a bunch of new issues pop up, but that's totally normal in dressage. It's like you bump up a level and you ask for more straightness or more collection or more engagement or more impulsion and things kind of fall apart because your expectations have gotten higher. And so that's where it is really important to have sometimes that external output, like of someone else there. Like my husband today, he's like, you know, Harvey looks so much better. You've really improved the connection and the PF massage is getting better. Whereas like when I was riding him alone yesterday, I was just feeling like, God, like it just, it's not right. Like it just doesn't, it doesn't feel good. And so, so yes, education is huge. And um, I know you guys are all super dedicated to your education, watching videos, coming to Facebook lives, all of that. So shout out to you guys. You guys are all amazing. And it's so fun to get to work with you guys, um, especially like if you're in one of my master classes and you're sending me videos. That's like, I think one of my favorite things is to sit there and watch videos with you guys and give you that feedback. And it's cool, like on Zoom too, because a few times last night during the Zoom call, I was able to like pause the video or rewind the video where we can really study, you know, what's happening in a transition or what's happening with your rider position and with your horse. And so it's a really valuable tool you know, in addition to having in-person lessons, I think in-person lessons are probably number one, but also like video and video review is another really important tool, especially if you're a visual learner, because if you can see it, like if you can see the crookedness or the hollowness or whatever happened, then you can replicate it. One of my students last night um, who submitted a video too, you know, there was like, she was struggling with getting her horse round enough. And there was, you know, this little section where the horse really came round and through over the top line. And we were able to replay that a few times. And I was like, see right there, you can do it. Like he can get really round and supple and through. And she was like, she had a hard time when she was on him feeling that. So because she could see it, then she's able to replicate it. So anyways, yes, Amy, thank you for um, your participation in the courses. Yes, Linda, I want to see some video of you. It's really helpful when I'm able to see videos of you guys. It helps me so much. Let's see who else is here on the chat. Joyce, um, you use your fly, my flying change exercise today. Yay. Yeah. So if you haven't had a chance yet, this week's YouTube video is on flying changes. 
featuring the magical Natasha. Um, let's see, Mindy says that you, she hasn't cried yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's pretty good, Mindy, because sometimes my husband does like to yell a lot. And um, I'm like sensitive. I'm a delicate little flower. I don't like the yelling. <laughs> okay, what else? Um, oh, yeah. Also, if you came into the, to the conversation late tonight, don't forget to RSVP for our summer party. So the link should be somewhere around this video and invite your friends. It's going to be super fun. We're going to have trivia. We're going to have helpful dressage tips from our audience and prizes. It's going to be fun. We did it last year and it was pretty fun. I like decorated my office and I don't know. I tried to dress up. I'm not a good party person, but you guys are going to help me. Um, what else did I want to talk about? Okay, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is your leg yields. So there was like this huge discussion on um, Amelia's Dressage Club about leg yields. And the question was, should you sit on your inside seat bone during a leg yield or should you sit on your outside seat bone? So let me know in the chat, in the leg yield, if you put more weight onto your inside seat bone or your outside seat bone. And there was like, I think there were like hundreds of comments about this. And there was a lot of debate about um, which seat bone you should put more weight on um, in the leg yield. No one's answered yet. You guys are all being shy. No one in the chat has answered yet. But it's interesting because my husband and I teach it differently. So even within this household, there's debate. Okay, let's see. Terry says outside. Linda says inside. Jackie says inside. Lucy says inside. Okay, so I would say more inside seat bone. My husband would say more outside seat bone. I did a video on this. So there will be a YouTube video coming out soon about this topic, but here's my thing. I like to put a little more weight on the inside seat bone so that you can step down into your inside stirrup. That's what Sarah Beth says. I would say that like, if you're having trouble getting the haunches to move over, then you want to put a little more weight on your inside seat bone and kind of lengthen your inside leg so that you can really talk to your horse's inside hind leg. If you need to get the shoulder to move more over, then I would say you could put a little more weight in your outside seat bone. But here's the caveat, and here's why I think there is so much debate about this, is that you don't want to be keeling over to either side. Because remember that a leg yield, the horse should be responding to your leg. Like it's not a body yield. It's not a rain yield, it's a leg yield. And so it's about teaching your horse to yield to the pressure of the leg. So if you feel like you have to like lean way to one side or the other, it's probably because your horse isn't reactive enough to your leg. And so I always think about like, get your horse to move over and then you have to get straight again. Like you always, Whenever you're riding, you have to give an aid and then you have to kind of recalibrate and get back into equilibrium with your horse. Because if you're leaning way to one side or the other, that's that moves your center of gravity above your horse. And if your center of gravity is way to one side or the other, then it's going to make it harder for your horse. Like, you know, like if you're carrying a kid on your shoulders and they're like tipping way to the side, it's going to be kind of hard to carry them and it's probably going to hurt your back and your neck. Um, so I think that there's a time and a place to put more weight on your inside seat bone. I think there's a time and the place to maybe put a little more weight over the outside seat bone in a leg yield. But bottom line is that it should be subtle. It shouldn't be like a big, obvious thing. And it should kind of be like, you know, put a little weight and then get straight again. So it's a little different in the shoulder and in the half pass. Then you always want to have more weight on your inside seat bone because in a leg yield, 
your horse should be straight from their pole to their tail. So a leg yield has flexion, but it doesn't have bend. So the horse is not bending in their whole body versus a shoulder in or a half pass, the horse is bending in their body. So that's why you sit more to the inside. But again, it's all about um, balancing above your horse. So the reason that you sit slightly to the inside for a shoulder in or a half pass is because your horse's body is actually curved. So your horse's center of gravity is slightly more to the inside, but it's not like you're keeling over to the side. So anyways, that's, I think the art of the dressage, um, someone said in here, it's kind of like someone says my horse decides. And that kind of is, it's like, you know, you kind of have to feel what your horse needs and to help them find the leg yield. But then ultimately, you know, you want your aids to be subtle as possible in dressage. Okay. That was a fun little discussion. I'm glad. I mean, that's what's so fun about like, the dressage club and these things is that we can have these like <laughs> geeky discussions about um, dressage, but they are super important. Okay, Linda, do you need to keep your leg until he moves over or do you release it right away? Okay, that's a good question. So in the leg yield, it's kind of interesting. My ideal aid for the leg yield is my calf. So like, I would like my horse to listen to my calf and, and my upper leg for the leg yield. Sometimes I'll have to use like my heel or a little kick um, maybe with my spur if they're not listening to my calf. But I kind of think it's like a light pressure. And then when they move over, you lessen the pressure. And then if you feel them not moving over, then you apply more pressure. So the pressure kind of varies but it shouldn't be like you're digging your leg into the horse, the entire leg yield. Um, another really good exercise for leg yields is the staircase where you like go over a few steps and then straight and then over a few steps and then straight so that you're really just training that initial reaction and that you, you put your leg on, you get your horse to move over and then you release your leg because that's gonna help your horse understand it and then once they understand it, you can refine your aids and continue with it. Okay, um, we have a few questions this week from Patreon. Um, our new Patreon supporters this week are Diane, Licia Noel, and Patricia A. Todd. So thank you guys for your support on Patreon. Uh, first question is from Jenny. My horse is in rehab after injections in his hocks. He has had a very strong right and weak left side. When we start again, I would love tips and ideas on how to train him as symmetrical as possible. Okay, so that's a really good question. And most horses have one hind leg that is weaker than the other, just like us, we probably have one leg that is weaker than the other. So a couple of things is whenever you're rehabbing your horse, you kind of want to make sure that you are riding to the weakest leg. So what I mean by that is if you're trying to do a big like extended trot and your horse is getting uneven in the hind legs, then that's too big. So you might have to start off with like a smaller gait and make sure that your horse is even until they get a little stronger and then little by little ask for a bigger gait. Because if you're riding them in too big of a gait and they're on level behind, then they're never going to strengthen that weaker leg. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, the other thing is with all of our horses you really want to do the amount, the same amount of work in both directions. So a lot of times we all do this. We want to just go the easy way and not the hard way. But it's really important that if you were to wear, they have those like trackers. Um, they have apps that you can use. Someone actually just sent me one. But anyways, you want to do the same amount of laps to the left as you do to the right so that you're working your horse symmetrically. Same thing like leg yields, for example. If you do three leg yields to the right, you've got to do three leg yields to the left. And that's really important. That's how 
the dressage tests are designed. Like the, the dressage tests are symmetrical. You do the same pattern to the left as you do to the right. So that's always really important. Okay, let's see. Sharon says, I ride in a double bridle and something new has cropped up. I do keep some slack in the curb chain, um, riding mostly on the snapple. My horse seems to like the weight of the double. Last week, he started fussing with his head, and we realized that somehow he put his tongue above both bits. He did this twice on the same ride. I do have a soft following hand. My hands don't bounce. Um, okay, we've never had any issues with this before. Yeah, so that is, is not a good thing when your horse puts their tongue over the bit. Um especially if it like happens in a test or something. A few things that I would check is sometimes over time, like this is good for all of you guys to know, over time your bridle might stretch. And um, so you always need to be checking in with that your bridle is properly adjusted because a lot of times the, the piece of metal, the piece of metal, the piece of leather that connects the bit over your horse's head will get longer and the bits will end up too far down in your horse's mouth, basically. If the bits get too far down, it's going to be easy for them to flip their tongue over the bit and you don't want that to become a habit. So um, the correct fitting for the bits is that like they the bit should be pulled up tight to the horse's lips there should be like one or two wrinkles um above the bit like see i <laughs> make it make some wrinkles in my cheek um you don't want it to be too tight but you also don't want like if the bit's just hanging there it, there shouldn't be space between the corner of your horse's lips and the bit so that's the first thing I would check, Sharon, is make sure that your bits are properly adjusted. Um, and then you may have to tighten a little bit the nose band just so that your horse can't open their mouth and flip their tongue over. Uh, another good thing that can help sometimes if your horse is like really fussy with the bits is maybe to like feed them a sugar or some grain or something just so that they chew a little bit more the bridle. Okay, um, what other questions do we have here in the chat? So Sarah Beth, why do all horses want to naturally canter a little bit haunches in if you let them? Is this a weakness issue? Something I've noticed over years of training. Okay, that's a really a good question, Sarah Beth. And the first thing, part of the reason, yes, it is a strength issue, but it's also an anatomy issue. So Horses' shoulders are narrower than their hips. I think ours are too. I don't know. But basically, the shoulders are narrower than the hips. So that means that, like, if you imagine that you're going right on the rail, I'm trying to think if I have a visual thing that I can use. Oh, I have my, this is my zinc bottle. I was like um, taking tons of vitamins when my husband had COVID. Okay, so let's imagine this is the horse's head and this is their hind end or the shoulders are narrower than the hips. So if you're going down the rail, right, and like the, the shoulders and the hips are on the rail, that's going to make the haunches be in just simply because the haunches are wider than the shoulders. And it's also a strength issue because when that inside hind leg is more to the inside, the horse doesn't have to carry as much weight on the inside hind leg. So it's anatomy and it's also strength. And that's why we always need to ride our horses in shoulder four or in shoulder in is because basically what we're doing is we're squashing the hind legs together and lowering that inside hip. It's like the beginning of collection so that the horse takes more weight on the inside hind leg. So Good that you notice that, Sarah Beth. You'll you will notice that some horses um, do it more on one side than the other. Like most horses keep the right hind leg more into the right. Like most horses have a weaker right hind leg than left hind leg. Okay, another question, Claudia. My mare has been on rest for almost two months. 
I started lunging this week and would like to start my groundwork again. Before she was on rest, she started being reluctant to get worked when lunged, try to face you and would get upset. I love the groundwork and was working on yielding the hindquarters and moving the leg yield, but I can't seem to be able to do it. How can I get her to work again after such a long rest? Hmm. Okay. So I think it's always, you know, it's like, it's like anything. It's like us. If you have, if you don't go to the gym for two months and then, you know, you go back to the gym and you go right back to your old routine that you were doing when you were working out every day, you're going to be very sore and unhappy. And I think that that is definitely true for our horses is that we really want to be consistent about how we train them and very incremental in the training. Because if you try to do too much too soon and your horse gets sore, then like, like for us as humans, we can rationalize that. Like if you go to the gym and you work out super hard and you make yourself really sore, you're like, okay, well, I know I'm sore because I went to the gym and I worked out really hard. Your horse isn't going to understand that. They're just going to understand that like, okay, today my back and my butt is super sore and I don't want to do that again because it hurts. So that's why it's really important in our training that we're super consistent and, and dressage is kind of like bodybuilding, like it's building muscles and that takes a long, long time. Like it, it takes a lot of time to develop that strength. So I would say, you know, if your horse has been off for two months, it's going to take that long to get them back. And, you know, a lot of walking, a lot of suppling and always like we talked about two, like less reps of it. So for example, if before you were, you know, leg yielding all the way across the arena, you're going to start out with just like three or four steps, let them walk a circle, pet them three or four steps, let them walk a circle, pet them. So you're still doing all the things you're just not doing as many reps as before. So hopefully um, that helps you with that. Uh, what other? Okay. Kay here says, my horse is always trying to find something scary outside of the arena. I try to keep him paying attention, but occasionally he will spin and bolt. After he bolts, what would be my correction? Okay, so that's a good question, Kay. And, you know, it's like you said, it's always best if you can fix it before it happens. So, like, you know, you kind of know if he's distracted and his ears, like, get, like, telescopes outside the arena you need to do a little something to get his attention back to the inside of the arena, get him looking to the inside. Um, when your horse bolts, the best thing that you can do is bend them and turn them. Because with a bolting horse, if you just try to pull back on two reins, that's never going to work. You're never going to be able to out pull them. They're just going to go faster. So if your horse bolts, the best thing to do is bend and turn that said, you have to practice that before it happens. So like you've probably heard of the one rein stop. That's where you basically bend your horse's head around, disengage the hindquarters. But again, you need to be practicing that all the time. Like if I have a horse that bolts pretty much every day, I do a little groundwork. I bend them from the ground. Then I get on them and I make sure I can bend them to both sides when I'm on them. You don't want to wait for them to bolt and then try to teach them to bend and turn because it's not going to happen. So basically horses have instinct, right? Like your horse's instinct is there to keep them alive and safe when they're in the wild. And that's why they're spooky. That's why, you know, it's not like they want to be bad, but it's their instinct to keep themselves safe. And so that's why they bolt. So you're not going to take the instinct out of your horse. You're just going to get teach them to stay on the aid so that when they do bolt or, or get distracted, that you have tools you can use to get your horse back, to get your horse to bend. But you have to install those tools and those aids at a time 
when instinct hasn't taken over because it's really hard to override your horse's instincts. Like your horse's instinct to bolt is very ingrained in them. You know, it's been genetically programmed into them for years and years and years. So you're better off to train your horse to bend and turn when they're not triggered by that instinct so that then hopefully when they do have that bolting instinct, you have tools. Hopefully that description made sense. I think it was pretty good. Um, okay, what else? I hope you guys are all going to come to the party July 31st. Invite your friends. Make sure you RSVP. Also, please, when you RSVP, you'll get an email. And if you guys have tips, like something that really has helped you with your riding, maybe something an instructor told you one time or like a visual, I would love to feature some of you guys and share your tips during the party. We're also going to have trivia. If you have any good trivia questions for me, um, email them to me. Don't share them publicly because we want to keep them a secret. And that's it. I'm going to go to the gym and do a little workout. I've been like really trying to be diligent about my gym workout because I know that it helps me ride better. But anyways, as always, these are super fun. And thank you guys for being a part of this community. I just, I can't even believe what this has all become. And I'm so excited. I have so many exciting things coming up. I have been working a lot on my computer. I've been filming a lot of videos. I've been using the GoPro a lot, which is kind of an interesting view to like see what my hands are doing and, and to see what my horse's neck look like when I'm riding. So I've got a lot of great content coming for you guys for the end of this year and also into next year. And I hope you guys all have an awesome evening and I'll see you next week, if not sooner than that. So bye everyone. Have a